So we are, we are uh, all already cyborgs in a way, in that the, your, your phone and your computer are extensions of yourself. <laughs> Nano, no, no, I don't know. Welcome back. As a reminder, I recently found a way that we can switch our shopping dollars that we spend on everyday essentials like cleaning supplies, toiletries, vitamins, and medicine to a place that supports the U.S. economy because it's all made here in the USA and also supports pro-life organizations and the military. If you're curious about that for yourself, feel free to reach out here in the comments or by DMing me on my Instagram profile, my thoughts and songs. Now let's get into it. So I've been wanting to talk about Elon Musk because I feel like there's some interesting things going on with him where possibly people on either side of the political aisle don't really see the full true picture of who he actually is. As we probably all know by now, whether we really care about it or not, Donald Trump has been reinstated on Twitter since Elon Musk took over. And some people, such as this guy named David MC1961, have had fun tweeting at the Biden Twitter page saying things like, FYI, the quote, real president Donald J. Trump has 87.6 million followers, as opposed to Biden's 27.6 million. So I did find that a little bit humorous. I also find it humorous that his profile looks like it was designed by a mom who runs the PTA at an elementary school in the Midwest or something like that, like very Martha Stewart. But since we're on the topic, here is the latest gaffe video that I just came across on Twitter. And today, TSMC has announced a second major investment. It will construct a second fab here in Phoenix to build chips, the three nano chips, the three nano chip, chips and the three nano, and you know what I'm saying. Nano, no, no, I don't know. But back to Elon Musk. The other big news is that he recently allowed for the release of what they're calling the Twitter files. And it says, what you're about to read is the first installment in a series based upon thousands of internal documents obtained by sources at Twitter. The Twitter files tell an incredible story from inside one of the world's largest and most influential social media platforms. It is a Frankenstein tale of a human-built mechanism grown out the control of its designer. So there was a word missing there. And what this is, is all of the hard evidence and proof of what probably all of us here already knew uh, about how Twitter was censoring information about the Hunter Biden laptop scandal during the 2020 election era, which, you know, could have very easily affected the outcome of the election. Tweet number eight of the Twitter files said, by 2020, requests from connected actors to delete tweets were routine. One executive would write to another, more to review from the Biden team. The reply would come back handled. And you can pause the screen if you would like and see the actual documentation of that here. And you know, that's all well and good. It's about time that that proof came out and it has been leading a lot of conservative, patriotic Americans who have seen across the internet to seem to think that Elon Musk is a really great guy and totally on our side. However, I have my doubts. This article just came out from the Western Journal about Kanye West being suspended from Twitter because Elon didn't like the stuff that he was saying about Jewish people. And it's entitled, As Elon Musk suspended Kanye West from Twitter, he sent him a powerful prayer. And my question is, since when has Elon been known to be a, a Christian and be praying? Apparently Kanye had posted a symbol that was popular in Germany during World War II embedded within a Jewish star, which I don't really get what his purpose was in that exactly. And I'm saying this in an encrypted way and blurring it just because I know that YouTube doesn't like this kind of stuff. But a Twitter account called Stop Antisemitism said that they found it horrifying and asked, 
Does Kanye West have to physically hurt a Jewish person before you act at Elon Musk? And the Western Journal continues, according to BuzzFeed, West ran the abomination along with the text, Yay24, love everyone, hashtag love speech. Yay24, just in case you didn't guess, is a reference to his 2024 presidential run. Anyhow, at Stop Antisemites question was swiftly answered since Twitter promptly nixed West's account again. Apparently, West responded asking, who made you the judge? And Musk's response was, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. So he responded with the Lord's Prayer. So it seems as though Elon was basically trying to say that he was doing the Lord's work by kicking Kanye West off of Twitter. And it's just interesting because I don't really remember him ever mentioning the Lord at all before, besides this other pretty recent tweet from last month. And this involves Sam Harris, who Google describes as an American philosopher. Samuel Benjamin Harris is an American philosopher, neuroscientist, author, and podcast host. His work touches on a range of topics including rationality, religion, ethics, free will, neuroscience, meditation, psychedelics, philosophy of mind, politics, terrorism, and artificial intelligence. So he sounds similar to Joe Rogan or somebody, and I'm pretty sure I have heard of him before. Anyway, on November 20th, he tweeted at Elon Musk, Is it time to let Alex Jones back on Twitter? If not, why not? And Elon responded with, Suffer little children and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven, quoting a Bible verse, Luke 18:16, And it's just very interesting how he keeps quoting the Bible. Because for one reason, his Twitter profile picture is him in this Halloween costume, with a goat's head on the chest piece. We know that this represents Baphomet, which is a representation of Satan, and what Christian would wear a costume like this? Much less keep it as their Twitter profile picture for months on end. Notice that there is also an upside down cross on the goat's head, so there is no debating about what this represents. But there has been debate about this photo of Elon sitting next to Texas Governor Greg Abbott uh, doing this hand sign, which some say is just the University of Texas mascot hook'em horns hand sign, um, but other people think that they're really doing it for the other intended purpose of it actually being devil horns. Because of course then being in Texas would be the perfect cover for that, you know, so what do you think? Also, don't forget that Elon Musk is the founder of Neuralink, which is rapidly paving the way for humans to become cyborgs, basically, uh, the transhumanism agenda. And I see this as basically like an unholy form of the spiritual being born again, a rebirth that the Bible talks about. But check out this video that Elon tweeted a link to recently of himself talking about Neuralink and the latest going on with it. So um, the, the, overall, the overarching goal of Neuralink is to create a, uh, ultimately a whole brain interface. So uh, a, a, a generalized input output device that in, you know, in the long term literally could interface with uh, every aspect of your brain. And in the short term uh, can, ask, can interface with uh, any given section of, of your brain and, and uh, solve a, tr a tremendous number of things that that uh, cause de debilitating issues for people. So, uh, you know, so our, our long term is I'd like. I mean, I'll talk a little bit about our long term goal. Uh, it's going to sound a little esoteric, but it's the. It, it was actually the sort of my, my prime motivation, which was, you know, kind of what, what what do we do about AI? Like, what do we do about artificial general intelligence? Uh, if if we have digital superintelligence that's you know, just much smarter than any human f at a species level, how do we mitigate that risk? Um, and then even in a benign scenario where the AI is uh, very, very benevolent, then how do we even go, the, go along for the ride? How do we, we participate? I, the, 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 thing that, the, the biggest limitation in going along for the ride and in aligning uh, AI, I think, is the, is the, the bandwidth, the, the how quickly you can interact with the computer. So we are, we are uh, all already cyborgs in a way, in that the, your your phone and your computer are extensions of yourself. I'm sure you found like if you uh, leave your phone behind, uh, you, you end up tapping your pockets and, and it's like having missing limb syndrome. 
like where you know if the, the phone is it is leaving your phone behind is kind of like a missing limb at this point. You're so used to interfacing with it. You're so used to being a de facto cyborg. But, but so, so what's the limitation on, on, a, on a phone or a, a laptop? The limitation is the, the rate at which you can receive and send information, especially the, 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 the speed with which you can send information. So if you're interacting with a phone, it's limited by the speed at which you can move your thumbs uh, or the speed at which you can talk into your phone. This is an extremely low data rate. Um, you know, maybe it's like 10, optimistically 100 bits per second, but a computer can, can communicate at uh, you know, gigabits, ter terabits per second. So this is the fundamental limitation that I think we need to address to mitigate the long-term risk of artificial intelligence um, and also just go along for the ride. So but like I said, that's, that, that's an esoteric explanation that I think uh, will ap appeal to a niche audience, um, <laughs> uh, some of whom may be here. Um. <laughs> I also find it interesting that Musk kept referring to his explanation of Neuralink as being esoteric, when esoteric means the quality of having an inner or secret meaning. This term and its correlative exoteric were first applied in the ancient Greek mysteries to those who were initiated and to those who were not, respectively. Hmm, initiated. Who or what could that be referring to? What do you think? So definitely some interesting mixed messages that Elon has been sending out recently. Let me know what you think about all this and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you again so much for being here today. Since you liked the video enough to make it all the way to the end, don't forget to click the thumbs up and share with somebody else who would also find it interesting. Leave your comments below and we'll all have a conversation. If you really enjoyed it, check out the description for several different ways you can support. Have a wonderful night, afternoon, morning, evening, whatever time zone you are in, and I will see you next time. Bye.